What is virtual reality? Is it here yet? Is it going to change the world? The answer to all three questions is yes. Well, maybe not to the first question, but it is indeed here, at least in its infant stages, and my guess is that it's on track to change the world indeed. Virtual reality is something that we can all guess toward the meaning of. It's not something that we all necessarily understand yet as a finite thing. The culture of it is still being built as I write this. There are versions of it being produced for consumers currently, most notably the MetaQuest 3. For me, the MetaQuest 3 is incredible. I play competitive games online against strangers in real time like ping pong. I work out in a boxing simulator and I watch videos that put me in the heart of the moment that was captured as if I was truly there. I can have access to music programs and create animated videos all in this headset. It has been infinitely inspiring for me creatively. I can move my head to and fro as if I would had I been there at the moment the event occurred. Is it virtual reality though? Sure it is, and definitely not. That's a strange answer, no doubt. There are ways to break this down. The Quest operates as a headset you wear over your skull and covers your eyes. There is a monitor on the front end with some magnifying capability that creates an all-encompassing image for your mind. The software technology allows, so when you are looking into a 3D modeled environment, the headset will track the movement of your head so the images appear to understand your position and respond accordingly to make it seem like you are in that location. It's an amazing experience. By all accounts, this is virtual reality, as we all dreamt it would seem like in a rudimentary fashion. The graphics are not the top of the line for what technology seems to be able to produce. The content is mid to low level, early video game console style from the 90s. We are limited to what experiences we can have in the system because the tech is still growing. So I argue that we are not yet at a place where virtual reality will be identified by history as being what it will ultimately be. There's a ways to go. The past media platform, Sensorama. In 1962, one of the earliest known forms of virtual reality, a contraption known as Sensorama, was created by Morton Helig. This device was something that viewers could sit inside of and have an experience that replicated a realistic moment. One would sit on a chair that would slide inside of a box, encapsulating one's head, whereupon a monitor would provide images, speakers provided sound, fans would provide air, and smells could be emitted to a viewer's delight. This sensory experience was the first of its kind and was dubbed by its maker as Experience Theater. The most notable experience of this machine was a motorcycle ride through New York City. Healy shot footage of a real ride through a, pers a first-person viewpoint and combined smells from car exhausts and sounds from the passing streets to create the virtual experience. One could be afforded the completely surreal experience of doing something essentially with one's senses only, without actually doing the literal experience. The sensory Rama was almost the same size as a modern-day video arcade cabinet. Helig was deemed the father of virtual reality due to this invention. Unfortunately, it did not catch on, took enormous capital to produce, and left virtual reality to fester in obscurity for decades longer. An article from TechRadar.com entitled Forgotten Genius states, The Struggles of Attempting Such an Endeavor for the Sake of New VR Tech. Quote, what Helig had built was so ahead of its time that it sat unloved by his swimming pool, hidden under a tarpaulin for generations. His wife, Marianne Helig, who worked with him on many inventions, took on enormous debt to fund his ideas, so much so that she's still paying it off almost two decades after his death. Brockwell, 2016. End quote. A sad state for VR lovers everywhere that inventions like Helig's could not pick up more steam and push the industry to its current state sooner in history. It's tech like Helix that gave inventors a scope of possibility for what VR could and would eventually be. Pop culture connection, the fundamental impact on pop culture that this media platform has had is still up for debate. Most users love the device. During the pandemic, sales for this Quest 2 skyrocketed as everyone was at home and could connect with others in social town squares through emoji-like avatars. The need was high for a machine that allowed people to be home and yet be with other people. However, as soon as the need left with the pandemic ending, the hype of the system died down. Commercials for the machine were everywhere. VR officially became a thing with the Quest 2. It was consumer-friendly, wireless, and very straightforward to understand. People still are not used to wearing a headset. And even with the advent of the best VR AR headset to date by Apple with the Vision Pro, the interest of VR headsets has not erupted. The tech need and desire for these machines is far from peaking. The tech isn't there yet to take the world by storm. When it does, however, the computer and TV as we know them could soon be obsolete. What VR is in reality is really up to the scientists who decide how the tech will work best. Once holograms are incorporated, what VR means could take on a whole new iteration. It's a long journey to find the answers, and we will just have to watch and see. I predict another giant boom and revolution once Apple streamlines their tech and the price comes down. Apple could very well be at the forefront of the future of this new frontier.